shapes and only use center lines and contour lines. To this is a drawing them. exercise I always do coming up with speed forms to make new fun shapes for designs. It's at the end of the third line and boom, you've got basic two point perspective. Easy, right? They didn't check if the two vanishing points are landing on the same eye level. Mm. That caused a lot of problem with plain angle issue or basically distorted structure. By simplifying perspective and incorporating these techniques into your workflow, you can focus more on the design element. Hey guys, I'm Nia. Thanks in here and welcome back to Conceptual Inc. Academy. Today, we are diving into the topic of giving aspire artist headache perspective. We all know that perspective is essential for creating realistic drawing, but let's be honest, who likes perspective? <laughs> the traditional 1-2-3 point perspective can be super dry and boring to learn. And to be honest, when you're just learning to sketch things in 3D, you don't need all those crazy grids and plotting. Don't worry, we will get into those in future episodes, but today we just want to cover very very simple concepts for freehanding basic perspective. Here are a few techniques that you can simplify perspective and allow concept artists to focus more on their design. First, we will introduce the idea of center lines and contour lines, which are the core elements that will make your 2D shapes become 3D objects. We will use the example of a simple spaceship shape to demonstrate how this works. Here, I will sketch out some random shapes as a challenge for Kingston, and he will, <laughs> he will use only these shapes and only use center lines and contour lines to create some magic. First, let's quickly recap what perspective is all about. Perspective is a way of representing objects on a flat surface to create the illusion of depth and three-dimensional space. The commonly known one, two, three point perspective involves using a set of rules and guidelines that you may have heard of, such as horizon line and vanishing points. So the big question is, how do we strike a balance between the math part and the arts part in our drawings? And do we even need perfect perspective in everything we draw? Well, the answer is, it depends. Kingston has always told our class that concept design isn't a competition about whose perspective is the most accurate or perfect. The design is the most important part. As long as a perspective is implemented and the structure doesn't look like it has logical errors, mm -hmm. with that we can put more energy to our design and draw more. Just draw random shapes everywhere on my sketchbook or computer and give it a center lines. This is a drawing exercise I always do coming up with speed forms to make new fun shapes for designs. The center line usually indicates the longitudinal form of the 3D object and is especially important if the object is symmetrical like these speed forms here. Then we can add in some contour lines across the form like this to really define the curves and the shape of its silhouette. We are born with eyes that naturally perceive depth and fall shortly. Even babies can sense depth naturally. Mm. So when our drawing have bad perspective, it feels like something, something is not right. Something's off, like, right. Like our brain just instinctively rejects it. Mm. Now let's address a common issue. Why do students sometimes resist using perspective in their art? I certainly struggle with it a lot during my time at school. Everyone. And yeah, I think a lot of people did as well. And I reckon it's because maybe a lot of traditional art courses often make it like a seemingly simple subject into something unnecessarily difficult. Like they might teach perspective like it's a math problem focusing on rules, formulas and rigid structures. Yes, this can set away the artistic joy and make students lose interest. Making it fast and convincing is the key here. Plus, it doesn't have to be complicated, especially for concept artists. The second tip is drawing three lines with an eye level. Two of which meets at the end and one that intersect the other two. One, two and three. Then draw a horizontal line across the page that touches the end of the lines. This will establish the eye level of the viewer or more commonly known as horizon line. This is where it gets good. Draw a fourth line that intersects these two lines to the right and meets at the end of the third line and boom, you've got basic two point perspective. Easy right? But the common problem for beginners are drawing the first two lines for left vanishing point, third and fourth line from the right vanishing point, and they didn't aware of or didn't check if the two vanishing points are landing on the same eye level. Mm, true. That caused a lot of problem with like plain angle issue or basically distorted structures. Mm. 
This trick is simple and useful and I totally stepped up our perspective game at school. By being aware of how important vanishing points are and that they must be on the same eye level along with a flexible mind and workflow, you can really make drawing in good perspective as easy as one, two, three. Yeah, instead of teaching students to do every step correctly or following the textbook, I prefer to create simple method to teach them why and how to avoid mistakes. See the same issue from another angle. You may find out that most problems can be solved from a different perspective. <laughs> Lastly, when you're sketching in 3D, you might have two ideas in the back of your head. Should you subtract or expand on the initial form? Well, it all really depends on the situation, right? Sometimes subtracting or simplifying certain elements can make your drawing easier and more effective. Yeah, in another case, expanding detail can bring depth and complexity to your artwork. Don't be afraid to experiment and find out what works best for each specific project. And there you have it. By simplifying perspective and incorporating these techniques into your workflow, you can focus more on the design elements when doing the initial idea sketches while still retaining a good sense of foreshortening and perspective. We will be going more in depth about plotting, mirroring points, and the whole draw through method in future videos when we tackle more complicated subjects and larger landscapes or like architectural type things. We hope you found this intro to perspective helpful and know that perspective doesn't have to be a daunting task to bring the joints of your art. Embrace the balance between math and arts. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more art related content. As always, keep exploring, keep creating and keep having fun with your art. Until next time. Bye. bye.